Hi guys, so we're moving on to our next family of movements and we're looking at the hinge. The hinge pattern is potentially the strongest pattern the human body possesses, uh, but in recent times we've, we've lost that movement pattern because we sit for long periods of time on our butt, uh, our glutes don't work and our hamstrings have become very tight. It's important before we accelerate our clients through the, the family of hinges that we learn to hinge properly and we begin by teaching the hinge with a three point hinge. For that we need a broomstick or a piece of dowel. It's just a bit of a feedback mechanism so they can feel what we're looking for. Our three points of contact with the, the, the dowel is at the glutes, and mid scaps and the back of the head. So this will teach neutral spine. So as we hold this onto Jens here, he can take it with his hand at the bottom and then one at the top. And he can make sure that he feels contact here, contact here, contact here. Now with his feet shoulder width apart, it's important we create a common language. We want to talk about keeping the legs straight and unlocking the knees, softening the knees, just unlocking them. And then we're going to drive our hips backwards into the space behind us. Therefore, creating tension through our hamstrings and loading our posterior chain. We're not asking Jens to drop towards the floor, we're asking him to drive his hips backwards. The height in which he ends up will be determined by his range and mobility in his posterior chain here. If he drives back through his heels, he comes back into extension. Let's go through one more rep. So we're going to unlock the knees and drive the hips back, which will drop the chest towards the floor. We maintain neutral. When we find our end range, we're going to drive back through and engage our glutes. So there's our three-point hinge. We can now add some feedback by giving them a target to set to. So they can work out where their mobility lies based on what they're feeling through their posterior chain. So we can do this here by placing something behind them, either placing them in front of a wall or using a box behind them. And we can get Jens to start a little bit closer to the box. And he's gonna drive his hips back going into his hip hinge pattern. And if he can make contact with the box, then we can just ask him to take a couple of steps forward. We can increase his range. He'll feel more now through the hamstrings as he drives back. We want to displace the hips as far away from the knees as possible. We can take one more step forward there, Jens. Little step. Perfect. Big air, get that brace, anti-flexion extension, drive the hips backwards. He makes the touch, and we're getting a really nice hinge here. Nice vertical shin, and the hips are going back. We're breaking, creating flexion at the hips. Awesome. Now we want to start to create some tension because we want to learn to apply some load. And we can do that by just taking a kettlebell and we're going to place it, into, place it into a core here to engage his TVA, his transverse abs, and create some more tension with what's going on at the front anteriorly here. So the hinge pattern is going to be exactly the same, just the point of emphasis now is on the brace. Because as we load with the barbell and kettlebells and dumbbells uh, in the future, we want to make sure we can maintain the brace. This, we always link back to the center of the arch. Brace, soften the knees, we're going to drive the hips backwards, he's maintaining that tension with the breath, drive back through and engage his glutes. Again, breathe in and brace, maintain tension, soften the knees, hips go backwards, we find the box and we drive back through. We're always teaching them to try and think about a target behind them, driving the hips back, try and turn that button on behind them and then drive back through, making sure we get hip extension and not lumbar extension.